This presentation covers the topic of switch statements. A switch statement is a type of control structure. If you remember, control structures are blocks of code in a program that determine the order in which statements will be executed. There are three basic types of control structures. For sequential control structures, statements in a program will be executed in order, line by line. Selection control structures decide if a statement or group of statements will be executed depending on if a certain condition is met. For example, if pay is greater than $50,000, then calculate the tax. And repetition control structures repeat a statement or group of statements a certain number of times or as long as a condition is or is not true. For example, calculate the GPAs for an array of student grades. Of the three types of control structures, switch statements are a type of selection control structure. Switch statements can be used to simplify the coding of conditions with a number of possibilities. An example might be a menu of choices for a user to pick from. Keep in mind, though, that switch statements can only be used for quality checks with certain data types, integer, boolean, or character. They cannot be used for expressions checking a range of values or for floating point values. Take the example of a calculator program that presents the user with a list of options for what type of calculation they would like to perform – addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. The user is instructed to enter the integer corresponding to the respective operation. For example, choose 1 for addition, choose 2 for subtraction, and so on. Here, an if-then-else statement is used to translate the user's choice into the operation variable. As you can see, there is a lot of redundant code to type. A switch statement can be used to make a program easier to read and to reduce the amount of repetitive coding. Instead of checking the condition in an if statement, each possible value of an expression appears as a case. The following screens describe the important components of a switch statement in more detail. The switch statement begins with the word switch. The variable whose value will be checked appears in parentheses after. For the previous example, that variable was choice. Curly braces are used to delimit the body of a switch statement, that is, the lines of code that will be executed depending on which condition is met. A case label is listed for each possible value of the variable whose value is being checked. For the previous example, the variable choice could take on the values of 1, 2, and so on. The statements to be executed for each case follow. If there is more than one statement, they should be enclosed in curly braces. A break statement follows the statements for each case. This causes execution of the program to drop to the bottom of the switch statement. If break statements are not included at the end of each case, all following statements will be executed regardless of if the conditions specified for the cases that follow are met. A default label should be included after all the possible cases to catch any values that might occur that were not specified by a previous case. The default case can be used to handle invalid data, for example. To review, the switch statement can be used to save time in coding multiple, but a finite number of, conditions. Cases are used to indicate what to do for each of the possible values of the expression that the switch statement is evaluating. Keep in mind that you cannot check a range of values in a case, for example, a grade that falls between an 80 and an 89. You can only use cases to check integer, boolean, and character data types. Remember to use break statements at the end of each case to jump to the end of the switch statement after a condition has been found to be true. Also, specify a default case to handle any values of the variable that do not match one of the cases.